when I listen to her giving advice to people like Jordan and everybody, I'll give her her own it's, show. I mean, she's just amazing. It's extraordinary. Like, every single thing that's come out of her mouth, I've wanted to write it down and like, <laughs> put it into, like, I'm just like, what? <laughs> it's yeah. free fairy therapy for me. And every, it's, it's, yeah. it's every time. It's really, yeah. really, really impressive. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of Big Brother's Big Body Language. I'm Adam Miller, TV editor at metro.co.uk and I am of course joined by Big Brother royalty and body language expert Dame, Dame Judy James. That just came out of me then, I didn't even know. That's what happens, you, you get there eventually. It's because I was holding the word Dame up, you see, to the screen as a prompt. Oh, that literally just came out. Um, but we are going to be looking at the housemates and deciding if they are telling us one thing, but their body language is saying something else. Um, right. Well, we actually did the penult- penultimate episode of the series now, uh, we're into oh. the final next week. Yeah. Um, which is mad. It's just flown by. I could have done with an extra two weeks, I think. I I could have done. I'm I'm quite enjoying this though, because I think there hasn't been a duff day. I mean, I don't think oh. I've ever known a big brother where there hasn't been a couple where you thought, yeah, yeah, that they'll it'll get more exciting tomorrow. Every single show has been just fascinating brilliant exciting annoying more than anything else but no i mean real drama real drama real job actually i don't think they'd have coped with another uh, two or three weeks no. either actually no. i feel they, like we're they, kind of, of storylines and stuff now doesn't it as well yeah i mean that and i think emotionally they're they're melting they've put everything particularly some of them that we'll be talking about and i think you know after a while, there's only so long you can be strong for. It's a clear no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, it has been another big week. And it's re- like Paul's absence has definitely left a lot of people exposed. Um, one of those people we're going to start with um, is Chanel um, after last night's episode, who I think may- she may have ensured that she's going home on Friday. But let's take a look. It does indicate who you're going to come at. Fair. Chanel, by indicating who you are intending to nominate, you have broken the rules regarding the discussion of nominations. The name of my second nomination will be Yinran. When we came back from the Hunger Games and Yinran was crying on the floor, I found it difficult to go over and console Yinran when the other person that she nominated is up for eviction. So sometimes you just need to read the room a little bit better. And sometimes you can be sad, but you just need to consider other people's feelings. So let's first take a look at uh, Chanel being kind of exposed for discussing nominations, because she kind of went straight into victim mode, being like she's being ganged up on. And actually, no one really confronted her about it at all. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's, let's take a look at Chanel because it, it, it's been, yeah, there's, it's been a, an interesting moment for her. Yeah, um, hugely annoyed by her on a personal note. Um, the big problem that they've got psychologically, the, the Garden Gang will mm-hmm. not face up to the fact of their own what are often hideous behaviours. There have been uh, bullying behaviours going on in there. They have been plotting, obviously, even plotting with the nominations. They've been ignoring people. You know, a lot of it, and I don't know if you watch the live feed, but a lot of it, I've noticed, is not even coming in on the main programme. Yeah. So I've been watching things that I thought, I'm sure if people saw that, that they'd, they'd be even more annoyed. But the big okay. problem with the Garden Gang is... They, they yeah. cannot admit to themselves or to their ego that they're doing anything wrong. They have to be the good guys. And that doesn't sit well with the fact that they're getting booed and they're getting evicted. So the only way that they can keep their ego intact with, well, we're lovely, why, why is that happening, is the fact that it must be the upstairs group that are sitting there amongst themselves, talking against them, plotting against them, bitching. And they're not. You know, but they're I not really, at all, no. No, as Jordan said, why would we? They're too boring. You know, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> really the worst thing that anybody's in that group. And that group have been using all sorts of activities to prove that, they, you know, Yin Run um, gave Jenkin a pass to her party, that they're doing all sorts of nice things to them. 
But the point is for the garden gang, if they admit that that other gang aren't that bad, it then admits that our behaviour has been a bit on the rancid side. So they have to almost take on that idea of paranoia. And that then tells them that everybody, including especially Trish, they're awful. They're awful people. Mm. So a lot of that was 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 coming up um, okay. in Chanel's behaviour, particularly because I think she's almost, in a way, become a little leader of, of that um, gang and showing a complete difference. Do you remember the woman that said, "Oh, I don't like confrontation. Don't even don't even use eye contact on me. You know, I need to hide under a pillow for about a month." There she is. I mean, really um, okay. plotting like the big ringleader of them all, and and this is hurting her because she's if she stops to think about it. You know, I've said that Big Brother shows you your reflection in a mirror. You find out who you yeah. are when you go in there. But people won't accept that. They can't accept that because they don't like what they see. And that's what's happening to Chanel at the moment. She'd rather believe that they're awful than think that maybe some of her behaviours might be questionable. And it's been, it's, it's really interesting because they've just, it, it, the, the, the even the talk of the divide is kind of only from one side, really. Like one of the, the other yeah. side is kind of, just, is, is just quite oblivious to it. Yeah. But also we kind of saw like it was very, like a really like a stroppy teenager or she got was getting called out like where she was like eating a bowl of cereal and like the eye roll and this sniggering and oh. and yeah but we haven't really seen loads of chanel up to this point and then but now we're seeing this yeah which is not good i mean this is what actors call a bit of business you know if you if if, if you've got something coming up where you want to hide your emotions you you find something to keep yourself busy and i mean she was fuming her everything at that point so why not just keep shoving conflicts into your mouth because it helps you to mask your body language so in a way i think that was also perhaps trying to feign that she wasn't injured by it but i think she's been in tears ever since um and then with the yimrong i mean you know i don't even know what to say about anybody that nominates yimrong i mean uh, obviously <laughs> she's got a stronger personality than we knew, but she's been so pleasant, so nice to everybody. And you could actually see with Chanel's body language that she felt guilty. She came out with what I, it was like a word salad. It didn't make any sense at all as to why she was nominating her. And she used her, her arms in a body barrier. Suddenly there was no eye contact. When she said Yunran's name, she used a dying fall. There was no energy. She almost couldn't say, her name that's how guilty that she was feeling she was she was curled forward and you could just see that she was trying to lie and make you know run out to be mm. the villain and not believing it herself and, and and shame on her for doing that because i don't even see that there was any reason in terms of i think you know might win therefore i'm it, I, I don't even think it was it was just unpleasant really unnecessarily unpleasant <laughs> Given all, given the the amount of conflict and tension there is in the house, I can you know like probably the one person who's so far removed from it, yeah. um, it was was really extraordinary. I mean, it was just yeah, and like you said, it was just kind of I, I didn't feel clearer about it at all after she'd finished nominating. No, and 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 the biggest moment of hypocrisy and misunderstanding yourself and your circumstances was when Chanel was crying in bed, you know, and sobbing away. And, and Matty was wonderful. He got his arm around her. He was comforting her. He was almost acting like a, a professional, you know, wake me up in the middle of the night if you feel. And she was going, I just feel so lonely in here. You know, and I thought, have you not seen there's a guy clinging to you like a limpet, which I have to say, um, some of the members of the house that are being labelled strong, they're the ones that are getting isolated because people don't yeah. seem to think that they need that. There's yeah. her. She's got it from her own gang anyway. But, she, yeah. oh, poor me. And she didn't even realise that at that very moment she was getting exactly what she was saying that she hadn't. I mean, also tell that to Noki, who has genuinely yes. been quite alone in that house. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, and you know, didn't get to be her family uh, member because because they picked yours, you know. Yeah, and uh, you know, Noki is doing in a way that, you know, I've said all along, she's, she's almost professional. She's so assertive. And she clearly thought the right thing, which is that I'm I'm going to mix the groups. I'm I'm not going to favour anyone. I'm going to be very fair. I'm going to integrate. I'm going to show everybody. And and then 
both groups started to, to be a bit suspicious because she was doing that. It, it was like she can't win. And I, that was, again, an, another pity. And I do hope people are watching this and realising what we're seeing and not thinking, oh, she's just, you know, trying to trying to make up with each group so she doesn't get nominated. It's not that kind of behaviour at all. It's grown-up adult behaviour. No, that is, is exactly what it is. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. But they are just still, they are children in there. It's like more so than we've seen in a long time, I think. Uh, yeah, at least I, that side. I, I love the way, because um, just briefly, this is the first big brother in the kind of woke era you know that a lot happened in the gap the few years it was off and i was thinking will it survive because people are going to be oh no please let me make you a cup of tea you know it's going to be so kind and so nice in there how long was it like that for i mean we got the pronoun thing and i thought yeah you know and uh, uh, these people and then it disintegrated into not just playground behaviors but horrible playground behaviors Mm. i mean really bad yeah, maybe maybe it is a good job that we've only got one week left. <laughs> there we go. Um, we just touched on it briefly then, actually, but we have seen a few housemates this week almost penalised for being for showing strength. Um, obviously, probably the queen of that is being Trish. Um, let's just take a look at these two moments from this week. There was a part of me that was like, "Oh man, I wish I saw her and I would hear her voice and her comforting words, you know, and her words of affirmation." You know, I would have definitely loved to see that. Trish. It doesn't scare me anymore because I think I've got more haters in here than I have out there, if I'm honest. So (laughs) I'd rather be booed. I know I'm booed out there than people smiling in my faces in here. I mean, we talk about, you know, strong characters in the house. I can't think of a housemate that's had to carry so much on their shoulders than Trish ever. Actually, yeah. she's taking all the responsibility for a housemate being evicted. Um, she's just getting it from all sides, from that, from the from from that rival rival group. Um, and yeah, we're starting to really see the kind of first signs of her feeling quite defeated. Um, but let's, let's take a look at that first clip. That first clip came after um, she found out that she wasn't going to see her sister, um, and she turned to the diary room, and we see a different Trish in the diary room, don't we? Yeah, and I, I, I think anybody with any ounce of empathy and understanding would know that that Trish is there underneath, the one that is doing all those amazing behaviours. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you how much I admire Trish. I could not have done a quarter of what she's done. And, and all she's got as a reward is the fact that because everybody is now turning around and saying to her, oh, you're a strong woman, you're a really strong woman. And it's become the curse of the strong woman because they're using it, they're weaponizing the phrase. Sorry about I hate that cliche, but I've got to use it. And and they're using it uh, to not allow her to have any benefits. I mean, she's got a child. Did they not think that she might want her sister to come in and update her about the child? It's everybody else. Oh, I haven't seen my father for ages. Oh, get over yourself, you're an adult. But a parent will want to hear about their child. But I don't know, because she's a strong woman, and I think partly what they're saying when they're saying that is, if I've got to make this decision and I go back and tell everybody, the one that hasn't got the visit, if it's one of the other group, they're going to absolutely freak out. They're going to make me feel guilty. They're going to make me look bad. They're going to be sobbing and crying. But Trish will probably suppress her emotions, act brave, and I won't look and feel as bad and that means that they're being cowards when they do that i i almost think they should stop this strong woman label mm. because nobody's strong all the way through and she's human and she's she's very warm and she's empathetic and she's trying to do the right thing in there i mean she's been probably the most mm. active housemate on everything um and now we are seeing her it, it she must be exhausted she's we're seeing a tearful side of her. We're seeing how isolated she's being. Um, and, you know, I did love that phrase when she walked out where she said, quite rightly, I think I've got more enemies in here than I, I have out there. But, again, that was a truth that the others did not want to see, so that will bring more attacks on her. Just a quick thing about her body language. We saw her there when she was waiting to hear who was going to be up for nomination. And she was doing what's called a pit bear gesture where she had her hands behind her head. Now, that's often seen because you're bearing the armpit area. 
that's often seen as a sign of arrogance, yep. um, aggression in the animal kingdom. You know, when we're scared, we 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 collapse up. But you know, if you see somebody sitting like that, that's a, so. Even that gesture probably would have been made her to the other garden group. Look, oh, look a warrior. She doesn't care. Look, she's just. But in actual fact, what she was doing was she got her arms embracing her entire head. And that is such a gesture of distress. And that's what they should be seeing. How often does anybody do that? Where you, I mean, it's such a hard gesture to do. And I would love people to try it for themselves. You do that when, when you really are under pressure and really feeling distressed. So somebody love should it. give her a break. But she's magnificent at the moment. Oh, she's so impressive. Oh. Um, so impressive. But like, yeah, it's been hard this week. She, just literally just kind of from her body language. Can you see a, a big shift from this week to say last week? Even? I think, I mean, I think yeah. she probably felt that she had more people that she could turn to last week. And I think that's begun right. to go away. And I think a lot of it hinged on uh, the you're a bully comment, which... Yeah. Who's going to say whether that was right or not? Um, but it, but right, it was bully. And she said herself, "I should have said bully behaviour." But yeah. that, as far as and even her own gang, I think that they start to look at her a bit. Oh, you know, are, yeah. are you the assassin in the house? Which she isn't. Um, I mean, she yeah. will call out as she said, and she wasn't doing it on her own behalf. Even she was doing it on Noki's behalf. You know, she yeah. was protecting Noki. And I think possibly um, the fallout from that, because I think there is a little bit of distrust from people. They've heard her being cheered, but I think they might be a little bit worried after that. Oh, I wonder if we should be backing you or, or not. No so, again, it, it's probably down to a bit of cowardice, I'm afraid. But the, when I listen to her giving advice to people like Jordan and everybody, I'll give her her own it's, show. I mean, she's just amazing. It's extraordinary. Like, every single thing that's come out of her mouth, I've wanted to write it down and like, <laughs> put it into, like, I'm just like, what? It's yeah. free fairy therapy for me. And every, it's, it's, yeah. it's every time. It's really, yeah. really, really impressive. I, um, I was I was thinking, you know, if, if I wanted to be a friend of anybody in there, who would you benefit the most from a friendship? And I, I would want her honesty and her low and her love. all right, her strengths as well. But you know, yeah, you'd want you'd almost want her to give you advice all through your life, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, just imagine having her as your mom, as your daughter, as your sister, or your friend, like yeah. all of them. Like, yeah. you know, just, she's just incredible. She's played every part so yeah. brilliant. And, um, uh, but the, pro the only problem with that, Adam, is she's played all of those parts really yeah. brilliantly, but she hasn't been able to play herself and that slightly more vulnerable, needy side of herself. And that's always the problem when somebody gives help, 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 nobody helps them. And I think yeah. that is why she's becoming more vulnerable this week. I, I hope there's a lot of cheers for her again to boost her up. Oh, I think I think there will be. I think I think she she could, but I think it's going to be really tight between her and Yinran at the end now. But the gap's definitely closing. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, so anyway, next, not so amazing. Um, we're going to look at the the end of the kind of the love, the first ever big for the love triangle <laughs> that we've been we've been championing all series. It really kind of, yeah came to a crashing halt. I think. I'm sorry, Henry. Oh, I was just taken aback last night because mm. you had that really long conversation with him. And we I could have like, talked about it. I know, but I was overthinking and so I'm extremely sorry. No, I mean, obviously you have to cope with however you want to cope, but I, I've, it was like on the worst days ever. Don't want to shout and curse, like, but you said that you'd finished talking that me and you had already had our conclusion. Absolutely. I'm not used to these types of situations, so excuse me for being a bit delatory. I did actually really appreciate your friendship and like want to get to know you and enjoyed getting to know you as a friend. I don't want you to feel pushed away and... Because I yeah. still want you to hang around with us. So we really saw this week, I think, when Jordan lost, he kind of lost control of the triangle that he's essentially been at the centre of. 
Um, he just kind of, he lost he lost himself and his emotions as well, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But first, it was going to start with that clip with Henry. Um, last week we said maybe there's a tiny, tiny, tiny chance that there is some sparks between them. Um, but for you, did this clip kind of cement the fact that there's definitely not? I, I think with Jordan, the, the word definitely doesn't apply, actually. I think um, it will... I, I would almost see those two going off into the sunset, uh, maybe living together and having that kind of relationship that will be like this for the rest of the relationship. Jordan would go out and flirt with somebody else, then there'd be tears, then they'll make up. and then, uh, Because the big problem for Henry, and we saw it, I've, I've never seen genuine yeah. heartbreak on television before. I, I've seen people pretending to do it, but right. this has been, I mean, it's almost quite a mature relationship because I think a, a day in Big Brother is like a year outside Big Brother. Right. And he was genuinely helpless and, and grief stricken when Jordan stopped speaking to him. And I think for Henry, he realized at that point, I have no control and no power in this relationship because if I don't do what Jordan wants me right. to do, I, if, if I start saying to him, you shouldn't flirt, he will just cut off. He won't even look at me. He will cut me off. And I can't bear that. Yeah. And I think so many people will identify yeah. with that kind of a, a relationship where you end up doing anything to keep a quiet life because you know that the power lies with the one that can actually destroy you, really. I, I don't want to make Jordan sound deliberate or anything like that, but that's the way it is. But... You know, what we've got now is that it is coming to the end of the run and suddenly people's minds start thinking of the outside world. And I think Jordan did notice that A, Henry didn't deserve that, but also it was making Jordan look bad. He must know that this line about, oh, I'm not used, you know, it's it's all wearing a bit thin. Uh, I mean, even if he's only had the relationships in his entire life that he's got in there, he's done quite well in terms of experience. Um and Matty, boy, is Matty suddenly thinking about his man. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, he actually <laughs> thought he was going to come over from America to visit him and scream and scream. I, I, I know he said he's got an open relationship, but he has been flirting. He's been returning the flirting with Jordan, and I think he's realised that that might what? not look good. And I, even if you've got an open relationship, do you really want to see your other half, the person you mm. love, on television screen being watched by an entire nation doing that. I, often I think in relationships like that, it's more like, I don't want to know, but you know, it's fine. Um, so Matty suddenly got all on his the high horse and everything, but um, I love the way he was unpicking his knitted hat, his finger while he was doing it. He's got some real um, distress issues when he's having to deal with it as well. But um, I, I still don't think this is the end of the story. I mean, Jordan, Jordan <laughs> do, do, do you think Jordan is a reformed character? Do you think he's absolutely just going to be loving and loyal to Henry from now on? I think they're just always going to be, they're just always going to be companions, isn't it? It's a good companionship. But with Henry um, being a bit lovelorn at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I can definitely relate to that. I think, um, especially at their age, actually, I can definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they'll just always, I think they will always, it's, it's, there's definitely a strong companionship there and that will always yeah. be the same. But I think you're right, it's always going to be this one-sided love form. Um, yeah. A bit, bit of a disaster for Henry, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> but also, it's, it's quite interesting what you say there about Matty, though, because like from that clip, I think it kind of looks like Matty's fed up, he's done with it, he's taking control. And then you look at Jordan and he's kind of stayed on the sofa and you really get a you really see the difference in their maturity and life experience, I think, a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. But saying that, do you think there were, could you see kind of more signs that Matty is maybe more distressed about the situation than he's saying that? I think, I think he was, but I think that's because of his outside relationship. I think yeah. he realised he needed to do that and make that little speech. Um, in there, I think he will become less dependent on Jordan's friendship. And I think he, he, he's kind of easing away already a little bit. And he, as I say, when they know the end's coming, they don't feel quite so upset if they break up with somebody. But, um, yeah, I, I, he, Matthew was, seems like somebody that would make friends with anybody. Really? But there definitely was. He, he didn't like it when Jordan used to 
um, cut off. He wasn't as bad as Henry, and I think that's why what Jordan realised. This is Henry's the guy that gets destroyed when I don't speak to him. Matty gets yeah. annoyed. Just Matty yeah. gets annoyed, and I think that's that's two different things. Yeah. Um, but I don't. I, what they will probably both of them get, they'll get Jordan to sort of be a little bit charming and lovable and cute for about another ten minutes, enough to reel them back in again, and then and then it will start again. It's I think it's done really well those relationships in terms of never getting horrid, um, yeah. never getting boring. Um, yeah. And I I just still I could sit and listen to Jordan and Henry all day. I think they're hilarious as well, which is brilliant. <laughs> Oh, they'll have a podcast or something, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, to side note, we were robbed of not seeing Matty's boyfriend uh, this week. Yes. I, was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was furious. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, but also very happy for Yinrin, who we're going to talk about next, actually, because there was one moment this week which really blew people away, um, and we really saw a different side of Yinrin. Let's take a look. I'm so scared of the eviction every time a nomination. So the best way to stop being scared is to face it. And I always feel like I'm the minor one in the house. I don't want to be the person who not being nominated because people forget to nominate me. I want to be up because I am the part of this show. I take this as an opportunity to me. <laughs> My God, that gets me every time. <laughs> like, I mean, it's literally like, a, that could be a hero moment from The Hunger Games. <laughs> um, it was quite extraordinary. Um, but yeah, very emotional to watch. But what, what stood out for you here? I, I love watching you run in this exercise because when they all came in with their outfits on, she was the one that looked most like a warrior. She was sitting upright in her chair. She looked ready for the battle. Everybody else was fiddling and looking nervous. And I suddenly saw uh, she would be the one you'd want with her, uh, with you, if, if you were going into sort of verbal battle or something like that. She is so smart. When you hear she will tell you how she worked something out in her mind, and every time she does that, again, and it's a bit like Trish, I think, wow, her insight is absolutely incredible that she worked out, no, you know, nominate me because I don't want to be the one that people just forget to nominate. And she has no idea really how she's viewed outside the house. And thank goodness the others don't either yet because they will, they will be spitting when they know how popular she is. But... The strengths and the eloquence to get that, it, 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 she's so, it sounds patronising, but she, she's so quiet normally. And then you get this massive intelligence comes out, this massive self-awareness that the others generally don't have, a lot of them. Um, and I, I, she did it as well with um, Jenkin. She, I never heard her being rude about anybody or anything, but I love the way that she very accurately and forensically because Jenkin, oh, last week's coming up, don't want to get knocked, and just from went round and started saying, I love you to everybody, like, I love you, babe. And as she quite rightly said, why is he saying I love you? You know, because he's not speaking to me. Why mm. does he say, and what, if you use that as a cultural term, what do you say when you really love somebody? Do you have to say, I really love you? And again, it just taught us, you know, it taught us so much about right. that kind of two-faced stuff going on, but she did it without any animosity. Mm. I, yeah. The more she speaks, the more you want to listen to her. And yeah. But unfortunately, the more I'm sitting there in tears listening to her as well. Yeah. Uh, that that was such an amazing speech, though, and I, I, it should yeah. have taught the others a lesson. Clearly it didn't. Mm. Mm. And just such a, yeah, just this, I'm just so glad we got to see that side of Yin Brun. Um, yeah. and, and I'm I, like, it really, it, it shook, it, you could see it shook Clint, didn't it? I mean, you could see it really shook Jenkin, I think. But not in, not in to form any action at all. I mean, again, you will shape them, uh, particularly characters like him, but then he will have to simulate that and think, no, I right. didn't do anything wrong. So she's doing this deliberately, you know, it's a deliberate assassination of, of my character. And... I mean, she nominated Noki, didn't she? No, I thought when she said that, I nearly fell off my chair. I thought, what? Yeah. 
But then her reasoning, where she told her in the sin, she let Trish down. You know, she walked out the room and let Trish, and she says it in such a wonderfully calm and reasonable mm. way. And I end up sitting there thinking, you are so wise. You are so wise. It's so four marks really selfless to her. It's like a really selfless domination as well, wasn't it? Like genuine, sincerely, it was almost for on Trish's behalf. Um, yes, yeah. But, yeah, you not, know. not malicious. I mean, and, um, you know, when when her boyfriend was coming in and she was crying, it wasn't for herself. It was because she thought he might find it difficult to get there. And, yeah. I, you know, that that really is all yin run, isn't it? That kind of thing. Oh, God, love her. <laughs> <laughs> um, finally, though, we've just been talking about him then. Um, at the beginning of the episode, I said it, Paul's absence that has left a couple of people exposed. And one of them for me is definitely Jenkin. Um this moment kind of sums up what we've seen of Jenkins this week, I think. Let's take a look. I just want to say, if my family come here, I'm not acting the matter. I don't care the situation. I will be engaging in conversation with them. Yeah. Oh. Hiya, Jenkins. So, yeah, it's been... Um, it's not been a great week for Jenkins. Um... And again, with Chanel, I think it's probably going to be those two up for the chopping block now. Um, but just that that's it, that kind of de steer determination, I'm going to do what I want. Um, yeah. And we've seen yeah. that a few times from Jenkins this week. Yeah, um, I think I've said all along, he's got a kind of desire to be leader. He has from the word go, but he's never managed it. But now in his group, he's, <laughs> he's kind of achieving that. But to turn around to the entire house and say, look, no, no team spirit whatsoever. Uh, if we lose the task, whatever, I'm letting you know. If you do not choose my mother when she comes in, I'm going to scupper the entire task. It was incredibly selfish because it affects everybody. It affects everybody long term. Um, it felt like a threat. And, and clearly they had to choose his mother because if they didn't, they might all lose the task. They, they didn't know at that point. And... I kind of would like him swap with his mother. Actually, she seemed a lot more, <laughs> a lot more fun. I, I know everybody keeps saying, and she said, "Oh, you know, you haven't seen be the fun person that you, you actually are." I mean, for me, there is so much that I want Jenkins to be a Liverpool character because there must be some. But he, going in there, when he went in there on day one, to me, it was like. You know that program stars in their eyes, but in reverse. You know, in that program, these quite drab-looking people go in and they walk through the drives and they're, you know, stars and they're. He kind of went in as the big, you know, bright shirt, screaming, fabulous character, and then he stepped over the threshold and he turned into this kind of puddle of moan, um, no. and he's retained that. I really thought that he might be a bit like um, a gremlin, you know, when don't feed them after midnight I, I thought maybe he needs those kinder eggs because they trigger you know the fabulous Jenkins that we but he's had a whole cake load of them now and it didn't make in fact it made him more sour because when poor old Yinran walked up with a to, a knife to cut the cake oh no you know nobody's having any of this it, again it was yeah. selfish selfish behavior I I really do okay. think there's somebody else in there somewhere and I really do think that other people might know a different version of him. But again, if I'm going to stick to my theory that Big Brother is like holding a mirror up to yourself, then he needs yeah. to look in that mirror and see that this has been a very pro prolonged bout of well, moany, miserable. And I think with no real reason, I, I don't think there's any real reason why he needs to be like that. He's, he is with nice people, kind people, fun people. Um, all right, he had a bad first day when they blew his case up, but I mean, he's had a lot of good things that happened. Yim Run invited him. To, you know, it, it's kind of unnecessary and a bit of a waste of space, really, as well. But I, it's a shame. I think I think it's in there somewhere. Fun Jenkins. I think so. I think it's. Um, I'm surprised he actually fell into the group he did. Actually, I, I wouldn't have expected that. I don't think at the beginning. But you also you you really physically see him when he's making those statements. He really gets his back up. And he's really yeah. like he's quite yeah. physically trying to tower over everyone, being like, "This is my decision. This is what yeah. we're doing." Yeah. Um, yeah. And we and don't really it, see him. But like it's just in those moments that we don't really see him presenting that elsewhere. I don't think. 
No, and you're right. His whole body language, his chin goes up. Um, he, he, you know, he looks down through his glasses. We get these very definite gesticulations. Do not argue with me. Whatever you say, this is going to happen. And you really don't see that behaviour from anybody else. I think the only time I've seen it was when Paul said, I'm going to cause havoc every night and that's it. I'm, you know, I, The more you argue. And that's mm-hmm. the only other person I think that has used that type of behaviour. But even that was more childish with Jenkin. It, it's almost as though I want to be the parent of the house and lay down the rules and lay down the laws. But I don't know how he can justify it because... You know, you do have to share in that house, and ultimately, uh, he nobody challenges him, which is interesting. No. I thought sort of Trish might go in there, but no, um, he really does go on challenge, so he's getting away with it. I, again, what worries me, I think, with with Jenkin and some of the others in that group, they might be crying their way through to the final and showing vulnerability and. Uh, he, you know, he's starting doing "I love you, I love you." I, I think we're seeing a flip in behaviours in a bid at the very last minute to show themselves as warm, lovable, and victims as well. You know, we are the victim of the other group, and I'm hoping that um, the public can hold on to the memories of what actually has been going on for the past few weeks because I have seen historically in Big Brother where somebody that has been very unpleasant for many, many weeks, suddenly flipped and became quite kind to everybody. There's a psychological thing when they do that, when you've been fearing somebody or they've been unpleasant and suddenly they're nice to you. Everybody wants to accept that niceness. So I think people need to hold on, hold on to the memories, make notes of what happened um, and judge by you know, the first three weeks rather than a little bit of niceness at the end. And we're going to see some really big switches in character over the next week. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Imagine. Yeah. Okay, so who do you think is going to go very quickly? Who do you think will be elected tomorrow? Um, I would say definitely Jenkin. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just really hoping every time that it's not going to be one of the other lot. You know, I, I, exactly. I'm, not, I'm worried to say because I might trigger, a, but <laughs> Chanel... Should be the first one out, I think, really. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Judy, and thank you for watching. And join us again next Thursday for the last Big Brother Big Brother's Big Body Language of the series. Um, yeah, take care. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.